probably to get your thoughts coming into this season here. It's your second with the club. Greg's third. What's the attitude of the group? Coming yeah. To the owner here? Yeah, uh, of course, uh, as you know, it's LAFC rival. As you know, we were knocked out by them last last uh, last uh, season in the playoffs. So, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a little source of revenge, obviously, for that game. But uh, obviously, it's the first game of the season. It's one out of 34. It's not end-all, be-all. But it's a game, obviously, we want to win for our supporters, uh, bragging rights in LA. So it's, it's same same old, same old. With the LA. Same. One thing Greg said, he thought that if that game had been played here, it could have been a different result. Is that the same? Get the same uh, uh, feeling. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think in general, just from the, this the game standpoint, I thought the first half we were really excellent. I remember coming into halftime feeling, you know, really, really good about the way we played. And after the second half, was a little bit chaotic in, in, in terms of that. But I can see why Greg's saying if it was played here because I feel like LFC got a sort of a push from their fans. So yeah, maybe if it was here, maybe the the, the outcome could could have been different. But as, as I said, at the end of the day, we lost by a last second corner kick. So, you know, the game was great. It was a good game. It could have been anyway. So, yeah. So, there is a possibility that Chicharito doesn't play on Saturday. How did the team so far take that, yeah. that news? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's the next man up mentality. You know, Dayan Ovalich has been excellent uh, last year. So, for him to possibly get the start is this filling the shoes of Chicharito is something that us as a, as a team have full confidence in him and, and obviously Chicha's going to be a big miss but it's, as I said before it's game one out of 34 so we want to make sure that Chicha's back fully healthy so he can uh, help us throughout the, the whole 34 games of the season. So you're saying Chicharito is a big miss, you guys are pretty much planning without him then? Um, right now, not, no, not necessarily, he's not, he's, he could still be in the plans but there is yeah. a possibility of him possibly being out. As I said before, it's a next man up mentality with Dayon so if it's either Chicha or Dayan, we have full confidence in both of them. What's your mentality going in? Because obviously we talk about Chicharito, you just spoke about the fans, right? Yeah. Is there a concern at all that it's going to feel more of like an LAFC maybe? Yeah, um, yeah I, I've heard, I heard rumbling, rumblings about that. And uh, honestly, it, it could, but m I think our team mentality and especially my mentality that I know for myself is I don't care who's, who's in the stadium. But obviously, you know, you want your supporters there, and I know the supporters have been dealing with issues with the front office, and I wanted to, you know, let the supporters know that I know uh, the past couple of years have been very, very difficult for them, and I'm not faulting them for that. I know how it feels to be a supporter. I'm a supporter of a different team, if it's called overseas, and I know how it is. But um, the guys, us, as I know as players, we need, we depend on the supporters so much. So I don't know if it's a cry for help, but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely saying we need your support, and if you could be out there, please be out there. And I know, and I said before, I understand, and I completely understand how it how it's been for the last five, ten years. I have, this is my second year here, so I can't con I can't attest to what they feel. But I'm gonna say it again. I really need you guys. We really, really need you guys to be there, not just there for the first game, but here for the whole season at Dignity. So yeah. I don't know how much you can comment on this, but do you think that there's maybe like a middle ground there? Obviously, we know what they're what they want. Yeah, yeah. But is there a middle ground there in terms of? Listen, I I, I don't know where the middle ground is. I don't know how we could resolve this, but. As I said, I said again, you know, all I can focus on as as a team, us as a team, is go out there and give our best performance, and you know, make fans want to come out here and support the Galaxy. Because I know, obviously, this is a prestigious club. Fans, you know, have felt like they haven't been as prestigious as it was in the past couple of years, and that's what we're trying to ultimately do now. Um, I think, you know, for our, my first year in the Galaxy to, to end off in the conference semifinals, kick of the game to the eventual champions. You know, it's a. I think it was a great season, but obviously, we're not. Dwelling upon that season, we're not trying to stay stagnant. We're trying to do one. We're trying to do better. We're trying to bring silverware to this club. So yeah, as I said before, with the supporters and the middle ground, I don't know where 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 the, the answers lie there because you know I can't control that. But we, as I said before, the supporters are so important to us. So yeah. On a oh. personal level, we know the magnitude of the game on Saturday. But what's it like for you? What's your emotions going into just playing at the Rose Bowl and being the yeah opener? exactly yeah playing at the Rose Bowl is a historic uh, uh, stadium. Um, Seen a lot of the great stuff happen there, obviously. So to play a part in the Rose Bowl is is, is massive, obviously. And uh, with LAFC, you know the fans; they don't really really get along with me. But you know, it's all fun, <laughs> fun, fun and games. You know, it's it's a game that I look up, uh, I look forward to a lot because it's a lot of pressure, kind of reminiscent of a European European feel in terms of that. So yeah. Rahim, um, touching again on what's going on with the fans. Is that, how big of a topic is that within the team? Is this something you guys discuss as well? Yeah, so I mean, here and there, sometimes we talk, we, we, uh, we, we talk about the fans, you know, just having them here at Dignity and stuff like that. But we don't want to get too much into, into you know, the front office and the, and the supporters groups uh, feud because obviously we're players, we don't really do much in terms of that. But yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of rumblings there. But like, as I said before, 
we just hope to uh, you know keep playing well, keep playing good football, and having the fans come out here and you know appreciate and, and wanting to be good, uh, wanting to be fans of LA Galaxy. When you look at oh, when you look at um, Greg's first season, if you didn't make the playoffs, you did last year. Do you see this group taking the next step? Yeah, this year yeah exactly. Yeah. Hinder, sir? yeah. Um, I think last year, even towards the, end, the tail end of the season, yeah. if you correct me, I think we we're playing the best football. In, in MLS, so I think, yeah, there's still a lot of stuff to build, build on. And after from year one to year three, I think he's made progress, but obviously now we're not going to stay stagnant. As I said before, we want to push the envelope. And, you know, that's fighting for trophies, you know, open, whether that's Open Cup, Leeds Cup now, the MLS, anything, anything silverware-wise, we want to win and we want to, you know, one up the year that we had last year, which is not going to not say it's going to be easy, but it's going to be difficult, but it's a challenge that we want to have because we're LA Galaxy. Here, you're Eve Charles Mill with MLSsoccer.com. I know you mentioned the supporters boycott had the cross time rivals win a trophy, uh, and and now it just seems like is this been extra layers with the, sort of the drama of this off season, or is just a slide from a big club? This this is slide from a big club. This this happens to any big big club, whether it's supporters or you know not you know getting silverware. That's what comes. That's the expectation for what it comes with a big club. So uh, guys understand that. We, we understand that. You know. Um, the squad understands that, and there's big pressure upon us, obviously, with LAFC doing so well to, to you know keep up with them and 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 uh, yeah, fight for LA. So you know, guys know guys know the responsibility that comes with playing with this team. Uh, there's no excuses. We just want to go out there, play good football, and, and um, obviously beat, beat our, our rivals. That's important. Raheem, you, you just mentioned right with LAFC doing so well. Obviously, you've seen been on both sides. What do you think it's been about them that they've had so much success over their like what five uh, six years? I think they have a, uh, the, their their front office and have done a real, real 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 good job of you know connecting players together you know the front office and whatnot. I think they just have a grasp of how the league should work and how the how the league is moving towards the trends it's moving towards. And I think LAFC is a little bit ahead of the curve in that. Um, so yeah, I think they're you know they're a well put together organization just like here in LA Galaxy. And that's what happens when you have big clubs. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on you to do well. And I think they've been since their day one they've been handling it really well. So it's good. Uh, game one of 34, but it could be game one of 50, 55. Yeah, exactly. exactly. How, how, how did you prepare for this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, as you, you know, well, with preseason now, we got a little extra bit of preseason now, um, a week or so more than usually that we have. And yeah, now that that we have possibly 50 games with the Leagues Cup and whatever other Open Cups and stuff like that, our depth is our depth is going to be tested. So this is, I think, this is good. This, this maybe the storylines of a lot of players that you didn't expect to make a jump. Could make a possibly make a jump. So this is this is what it's all about in Europe. There's so many competitions where depth has to be tested. It can't just be your first eleven or sub sub some sub players. Like everyone needs to play a part. And with competitions like this, this is what brings it, brings it out the depth. So our depth will be tested, but that's good. To piggyback off that a little, just your thoughts over, overall about the new format of playoffs. Yeah, the format for playoffs. Yeah, I, I heard about the eighth and the ninth seed. That is, uh, <laughs> I think it's more games. You know, so it's more games, but it's. It's uh yeah it's kind of it's kind of strange but um, my mind's not really on that because I think we're my 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 club's gonna be top four so my mind's on that it's wherever we play wherever we play wherever we play wherever the format is we're ready to go. Do you think more games could be better? What's your thought on that? Yeah um it, there there's, there's obviously pros and cons with that obviously um more games in terms more options for guys possibly um. The downside is, you know, maybe more injuries, possibly if you play your eleven and whatnot. But yeah, there's pros and cons. I'm, I didn't really look too much into it. I just take it one game at a time. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. You guys have a good one.